Right, guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming uh, at you live from uh, Palm Beach in Florida. Um, I uh, scanned through all the uh, slides from the uh, for the conference call, which is going to be tomorrow, Eastern time, 1 p.m., August the 4th. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I've also had a chance to uh, open up the uh, financials, and that to me is more uh, interesting, uh, probably because I don't have a life. Than, uh, than the actual uh, performance on a, on a quarterly basis. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a 100-year-old company and, uh, and they just reported the quarter, right? So if you're 100 years old, you've already reported 400 quarters. So uh, I'm not, not too phased about um, the quarter per se, but I mean, at the end of the day, that's what uh, helps to drive the stock price or not. So um, let's quickly take a, a look here just to summarize the news. Uh, reported just after the uh, market closed today, which is August the 3rd. Occidental announced its uh, earnings results for uh, the second quarter of 2021, which would have ended on June the 30th. And uh, now, as I say this, also keep in mind that we're already at the um, uh, beginning of August, so we're already more than uh, uh, one third into the third quarter. Um, and uh, we still have WTI, which is the primary source of revenue for Occidental, uh, you know, hovering in the sort of early $70 range per barrel. Uh, so as of uh, now, we're looking at we're looking back at the second quarter, but actually in terms of where we are right now, uh, the, the situation is even better than what it was at the end of the second quarter because the average uh, WTI price for the second quarter might have been... Um, I'm not too sure about this one, so don't quote me, but it, I think it was like maybe 60 something, 61, 63, whatever average, I'm gonna have to look. Um, but anyway, so far for Q3, the average price for WTI is even higher. Anyway, let's get into the meat on the bone here. So uh, Oxy reported a second quarter loss after preferred stock dividends of $97 million or 10 cents a share, but on an adjusted basis, it reported a profit of $32 per share. Net sales rose to 5.96 billion. So I was one of the people who kind of, uh, you know, stuck my neck out there and said, um, I'm pretty sure Oxy's going to break 6 billion for the quarter. Well, they kind of disappointed me by falling short. Um, just a little, but, you know, I'm easily disappointed. So uh, I expected them to hit 6 billion. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm not complaining. Analysts survey, surveyed by facts said expected break even profit or an adjusted profit per of a penny a share and 5.87 billion in sales. So Oxy handsomely uh, beat the analyst expectations, analyst analyst. Anyway, let's uh, take a look here. This is the SEC filing, which uh, has obviously just been released. Um, so it's uh, kind of hot off the press. And uh, work with me as we just scan through this one uh, just for a minute here. So. Cash and cash equivalents, four and a half billion dollars. Um, six months ago, they only had two billion dollars cash on hand. Total current assets, twelve billion dollars, almost thirteen compared with about nine uh, in December thirty on December thirty one. Uh, the asset uh, total asset value is about the same. So even though they had um, some uh, divestitures that were marked down quite significantly, including in the first quarter, um, the asset value of the company uh, hovers around $80 billion as of today. Current liabilities only up a little smidge uh, over the last six months from 8.2 to 9.5 billion. So the first thing that we do as uh, investors is um, when we look at the balance sheet, we look at the um, total current assets, almost 13 billion compared to the total current liabilities. Total current liabilities basically represents anything that would be due in approximately 30 days, uh, nine and a half billion. So we can see that their current assets and cash equivalents, cash and cash equivalents easily covers the current liabilities. Long-term debt, 35 billion. So, uh, if we look at the total deferred credits and other liabilities, it's down about a billion dollars. So um, you know, to see how much of a dent they can knock in that. Uh, we already know from the conference slides that I shared just a, a minute or so ago. Um, where was that slide? Let's see. Um, there was a reference here to, uh, yeah, here we go. 
$3.1 billion debt tender after retired selected 20, 2022 to 2026 debt maturities. Um, so we already know because that happened uh, overlapping the period, sort of June, July. Uh, so we're going to see the debt, the long-term debt come down. The, the target is 25 in order to get it to uh, investment grade. So um, they got $10 billion to go there. And uh, I think for um, Q3, you're going to see that number reduce quite significantly, not only because of the free cash flow, but also because of the um, debt tender offer, which has just recently uh, been concluded. So um, <laughs> net sales, right? So close to $6 billion. Uh, just in order to please Mr. Roxy, I'll just add in the interest in dividends and other income of uh, 49 million. And uh, that puts me over six. Then I can say I was right. Anyway, um, depreciation is a big charge here. Of course, it's not a cash entry. It's just a book entry. Uh, gains and losses from interest swaps, income from equity investments. Ta -ta -ta. There's your uh, net loss attributed to shareholders, uh, 10 cents on an adjusted basis, profit of 32 cents. Net income loss, comprehensive loss attributable to shareholders, and it's not significant. Cash flow from operations. You know, this is a really, really good picture. You know, the cash flow from uh, operating activities comparing 2021, which we have up here six months to 2020. Uh, of course, it's fair to say everybody knows that 2020 was a huge crash. You know, so um, it's an anomaly, right? Or as uh, Malcolm Gladwell will say, it's an outlier, the uh, 2021 crash. CapEx. Damn, they're doing a good job. 1.3 billion. They've been really, really uh, strict on uh, managing their operational expenses and their capex. Uh, There's not a lot of stuff going on here. By the way, the other thing that's uh, that's kind of an irritant is that 8% um, coupon of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, remember, just uh, not even a year ago, what is it like? I think it was Q3 of 2020. Um, Oxy was still. Um, issuing stock in order to pay that $200 million a quarter coupon. Now it's uh, no big deal because they're generating free cash flow of $2 billion. Uh, not too shabby, huh? Uh, as usual, the, um, the really good quality content is um, in the comments uh, and the notes to the uh, financial statements. So uh, when you allow me a little bit of time, I'll take a look at some of those and see if I can find anything in the notes that we should be uh, concerned about or uh, potentially could be happy about. Uh, so I'll, I'll read the notes um, uh, a little later and maybe over the next day or so. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is the, um, the, the earnings call with the analyst analyst on the call. So uh, when we listen to the call, we can also uh, get some notes from the conference call in order to. Um, uh, get some insight in, into uh, what the guidance looks like for the re remainder of 2021, and maybe even a little glimpse of what um, uh, Q3 of 2021 might look like, not only in terms of uh, guidance, in terms of um, millions of barrels of oil equivalent per day, but also in terms of uh, debt repayment. Um, they have a lot of cash. Uh, they have the debt tender offer, which is in their favor. And by the way, they still have, uh, Oxy still has a um, $5 billion um, undrawn facility. Yeah. In other words, the entire facility is available. Um, I'm going to pause this video here. Uh, you know, thanks for, uh, for sticking with me and for uh, kind of following through on the story with me. Uh, we'll see where we go. Uh, tomorrow is another day where we can uh, kind of look at the um, uh, uh, at the insight we will get from uh, Oxy's management team when uh, Vicky and Rob are on the call with the analysts tomorrow. Uh, so it's just a few hours away. Uh, in the meantime, uh, this is Mr. Roxy uh, or Rudy for Best Your Investor saying thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the videos, remember to subscribe. I'll see you soon. We'll be back more, with more as soon as possible. Bye-bye.